Hey everyone, what's going on? This video is going to be kind of a follow-up video to the last one that I put out. And what I talked about in this video was how Charles Manson and his Helter Skelter theory are seemingly absolutely connected to many events going on in the year 2020. And for a number of years I've talked about how Charles Manson was important to the kneeling during the national anthem symbolism that's going on in the NFL. And then Charles Manson died like a month after I really started talking about that. And the Helter Skelter theory is about black people rising up. Think about what is going on this year with, you know, the racism movement and Black Lives Matter, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor. In this video, I even talked about how he's connected to the NBA and also the Houston Rockets and LeBron James. And I even pointed out that the date of August 26th was going to be some important day. You know, I thought maybe Russell Westbrook might return on that day and play for the Houston Rockets because Russell Westbrook's birthday just so happens to be the same day as Charles Manson's birthday. And James Harden's birthday just so happens to be August 26th, the day that Colin Kaepernick originally was in the news for taking a knee. And lo and behold, the NBA protests and you know they miss a few games Russell Westbrook he gets some rest and ends up coming back for the game five and they blow out the Oklahoma City Thunder and you know I could care less if the Rockets are win the NBA Finals this year or whoever wins the NBA Finals but if they don't win it doesn't even matter because the things that are going on with the Houston Rockets they are showing me this other narrative that is important to other things. So with that being said, let's get into it. I want to, I want to start with the death of Cliff Robinson, because these are the type of things that I talk about all of the time. So Cliff Robinson dies just what, I can't remember what day that he died. Was it August 29th? Pretty sure it was. Cause I was at the zoo that day and I wrote this in the afternoon, but Cliff Robinson, the former Portland trailblazer died. Of course he died at the age of 53 just before the Lakers beat the Portland Trailblazers in the playoffs, right? They knocked him out of the playoffs. In the language of Gematria, Trailblazers equal 53. Trailblazers, 53. Los Angeles equals 53. Right, Los Angeles, Trailblazers, 53. He dies at the age of 53. It just so happened to be the Lakers and the Blazers' 53rd playoff game ever against each other, too. And Cliff Robinson's nickname just so happens to be Uncle Cliffy, apparently. That's what the media tells us and so on. Uncle Cliffy equals 53. But what's really, really interesting to me is that I was fo I've been following this pattern since Kobe Bryant's birthday. Look at this blog post I have here. Cliff stories in the media recently. Cliff theme, right? And there was a bunch of stories about Cliffs, and I just noticed the pattern. And I had previously noticed a pattern with Cliffs a few years ago that I'm going to explain in a minute. But, you know, there was a story here on Kobe's birthday about the Grand Canyon and a cliff. And then there was a story about Cliff Clavin from the TV show Cheers and the Postal Service. And then there was a story about some girl who fell off the ledge at New York's Zor Valley. And it just reminded me of some things that I talked about last year. And... In 2018 is when I really started noticing this major thing with cliffs, right? In 2018, we had the Austin bomber, and it was synced up to the Stoneman Douglas shooting and also to the WWE, and because the, the killer was named like, or there was a, a school shooting right around that same time as the, they caught the Austin bomber, and then, you know, it reminded us of Stone Cold Steve Austin, and the shooter in that Maryland school shooting, his name was Austin Wyan, Wyatt Rollins, reminding us of Seth Rollins and, what is it, Bray Wyatt and whoever, you know, wrestlers. And I thought this was interesting because also right around that same time, we got a story about this family who crashed their car over a cliff. And they were known as the Hart family. And I remembered when I was a kid, the wrestler Owen Hart, he had died at a pay-per-view called Over the Edge. 
And what was so interesting about that was the Stoneman Douglas shooting that was on Valentine's Day. And I'm trying to think, it was on Valentine's Day. And then just after that, you know, we had the YouTube shooting, and YouTube was founded on Valentine's Day. We were also told that the wrestler Mark Henry knew one of the victims of the Austin bomber. And I thought this was interesting in regards to Owen Hart and the Hart family crashing off of the cliff and he died at Over the Edge because there was another pay-per-view on Valentine's Day, the same year that he died, I believe it was 1999. But at the St. Valentine's Day massacre, Owen Hart wrestled Mark Henry. And Mark Owen Hart was also in relation to Stone Cold Steve Austin because he actually is the reason Stone Cold Steve Austin eventually had to retire to his neck injury because Owen Hart did the a botched pile driver on him. And anyway, I noticed in Gematria that the word cliff equaled 99. And this was interesting because Owen Hart just so happened to die 99 days after the St. Valentine's Day massacre and he died at Over the Edge on the date of 523. And the 99th prime number is 523. And, and there was a whole bunch of other stuff that was connected to that. I can't remember it all. A bunch of 523 and the number 99. And I just wondered if there was something important to that Cliff story, right? And there was another, another story about one of the kids who drove over the edge called the, of the Hart family. He was like in a picture hugging a police officer after Michael Brown had died. And the police officer's name was, like, Sergeant Brett Barnum. And if you looked up Owen Hart's brother, Brett Hart, Brett Hart's name is Brett Sergeant Hart. So I was like, there's got to be some connection to this cliff theme, right? So I went to my blog back in 2018, and I typed in cliff to see if I had documented about any cliff themes that were going on. And the only thing that I wrote about just so happened to be on Valentine's Day of all days. And I wrote about a cliff collapse and an earthquake in Christchurch, New Zealand. And, you know, I didn't know what to think of it at the time. It just, it didn't, I was like, that's pretty interesting. It's on Valentine's Day, right? And the Austin bomber, his name just so happened to be Mark Anthony Condit. And later in the year, we got the mail package bomber and his name was Caesar Sayoc. And I pointed out that that's interesting considering Julius Caesar, right? Mark Antony, Julius Caesar. And we started to think that maybe there was something important to the Ides of March. Lo and behold, on the Ides of March of 2019, the major story was the mosque shooting in Christchurch, New Zealand. Like, what are the odds of that? The only story I document in connection to all of this that has to do with cliffs has to do with Christchurch, New Zealand. Later on, the pattern turns into showing me how it's important to Julius Caesar in the Ides of March. And then on the Ides of March that next year, we get a major shooting in Christchurch, New Zealand. So then in 2019, then, after the Christchurch shooting, we got another story about that uh, family that, who drove over the cliff. So I knew there was something important to that. You know, and then that the Rastafari guy, the guy wearing the Rastafari hat, he attacked Bret Hart while he was giving his speech just before WrestleMania and so on. Just so ridiculous. And there was all kinds of cliff stories in the media at that time. Like Kevin Gar or Kevin Durant's cousin or brother or whatever his name was, Cliff Dixon had died. And I had had some synchronicity with the TV show Cheers. And it was connected to my friend Norm. So I started thinking, hey, Norm and Cliff on the TV show Cheers. It was also around the time that Cliff Eberhardt, or whatever his name is, he was attacking Zach and so on, right? Cliff. There was also a story about the TV show called Dallas or something like that. Let me find it here. There was a guy, the, the character named Cliff on this TV show called Dallas died. And April 24th, 2019... See, I pointed out Cheers and Cliff, and even when you read about this show, it says it's known for its cliffhangers, and I just was noticing this big pattern with cliffs. There was even a story about a girl that went to Briar Cliff College, right? Briar Cliff, and that's a, a college like in Iowa that I'm pretty close to and so on, 
and I documented how it was a a Catholic college, and let me find it here. But there was a girl who went to Briar Cliff, who just so happened to be taking a selfie, and she fell off the cliff, right? Briar Cliff, and then she dies by falling off a cliff. And right around that same time, there was another college student who had did the same thing. They died and fell off the cliff. So, I just, I I knew there was something important to what was going on with cliffs and so on. And after I was documenting all this stuff, my, uh, I went to work the next day. And my, this lady that I work with, she happened to bring some salsa in. And she told me I could have the rest. And it just so happened to be Cliffy's salsa. And I was like, what are the odds of that, you know? It's like, I'm talking about this big cliff theme that's going on in the media. And then I go to work and my co-worker tells me that she brought some salsa that I could just take home. Because nobody likes it because it's spicy. Apparently her sister or something makes it and sells it and whatnot. And it's called Cliffy's. I was eating it and I'm like, Cliffy's? What are the odds of that, you know? So... I guess I'm just bringing all of this up because I want to show people these synchronicities that I have because they're very important to how I follow a pattern and how it is synced up to the mainstream media stories. And, you know, a lot of times we want to blame all of these things on the Freemasons or the Jesuits and so on. And, you know, a lot of this stuff is actually, I don't think that it's all about that. You know, I I really do think there is a cabal. I mean, it's obvious with, You know, like the Umbrella Man and the George Floyd thing and so on. It's very obvious. But there is just the way that this world is all related. It doesn't even matter, you know. If if there's a cabal creating certain stories and so on, it can still connect to the way that you're living your life if you're paying enough attention to what's going on. So I just want to document all this because, you know, what are the odds that I then document on Kobe Bryant's birthday which was also the same day that Jacob Blake was killed. And that's what caused the protest in the NBA and so on. And then, you know, on August 29th, then a few days later, we get the death of Cliff Robinson and his name just so happens, his nickname just so happens to be uncle Cliffy, right? Cliffy. And to even further this narrative that I'm talking about. So, (laughs) I went to the zoo, my son's, we went to the zoo for my son Alistair's first birthday on this day, and we kind of stopped, and I was looking at my phone, and I was like, no way, I just documented about a Cliff theme, now Cliff Robinson dies, and of all teams, you know, the Portland Trailblazers, they were playing the Los Angeles Lakers that day, and then he dies age 53, and you just instantly see the narrative when you've been following it for a while, you know, Trailblazers equal 53, and so on, and I didn't think anything of it, we went to... We went to the zoo, we came home, I got home probably like 5 o'clock, I started watching the Rockets and the Oklahoma City Thunder game on my phone, and my cousin Timmy had called me, and I haven't been over to his house in a while, but he randomly called me, and he wanted me to come over and hang out, drink a couple beers or whatever, and so I was like, well, I'm tired, but whatever, I'll go over there, I haven't seen him in forever, and I took my kid Zamian over there so he could play and so on, and we were sitting over there, and it's probably like eight o'clock at night or something and a car pulled up and the uh, a younger girl got out and she came up and sat down and talked to us and I sort of know the girl but not really I just know who she is but she just graduated and she was telling my cousin Timmy and his wife how she goes to college Briar Cliff and I'm like what are the odds of this I'm at the zoo I see how Cliff Robinson died right after I'm talking about a cliff theme And now this girl randomly shows up and she's telling them about her experience at the college Briar Cliff. And she goes on to tell them how she's, she's not Catholic, but she's like on the golf team there. And they have to take some class called Franciscan Values or something like that. Because it's a a St. Francis of Assisi school, a Franciscan college and so on, right? And I was like, oh yeah, I know who that is. That's the guy who got the first stigmata. And she's like, how do you know that? You know, I'm just like. Trust me, I've been studying this stuff for a long time, but, you know, what are the odds that she's from Briar, you know, talking about Briar Cliff and so on? And even more so, in Gematria, look at her name equals. Her name equals 261. 
Just like how Charles Manson equals 261. Just like how Russell Westbrook's name equals 261. Just like how LeBron James equals 261. Just like how the NBA bubble began 261 days after Charles Manson's birthday. And George Floyd was all about the number 261 because it's a number I've talked about with twin symbolism. And George Floyd died in the twin cities during the time of Jim and I, which is the twin. And they even said Stephen Jackson, the former NBA player was his twin and so on right so what are the odds her name would equal 261 also 183 this other humongous number that's been coming up a lot lately lebron james also equals 183 my cousin timmy also just so happens to be one of the reasons why i was following a houston rockets narrative in 2017 right i talked about how he was in a car wreck with my best friend's brother and how we were watching ron artest at my best friend's apartment one night and his tooth fell out and then isaiah when isaiah thomas died it was synced up and isaiah thomas his sister china died in a car that looked exactly like mine a toyota camry and it was a car that my girlfriend drives and then earlier that year my girlfriend had lost the tooth and then isaiah thomas lost one of his tooth the same tooth that my girlfriend lost like in the next couple of games and so on and The Rockets ended up getting knocked out of the playoffs that year on May 11th, which is the same day that my best friend's brother died in a car that I went to my first ever fo college football game in when they Michigan played Michigan played Houston and they won 50 to 3. So it's just like what are the odds the Rockets are getting knocked out on that day, right? Anyway, let's go back and look at Cliff Robinson now. Or let's just look at Cliff Robinson and and Gematria here. Cliff Robinson 194, 261, 282, 416. Look what Charles Manson equals in Gematria here. Absolutely identical. You know? <laughs> Absolutely identical. Charles Manson equals the same as Cliff Robinson in every one of these Francis Bacon ciphers. I mean, what are the odds, you know? Another interesting thing I was just thinking about the other day, I don't even know if I even blogged about it yet, but his his full name in these other ciphers is Clifford Ralph Robinson, right? And it equals 234, just like how Orlando, Florida equals 234, and that's where the NBA bubble is being held. It's also Russell Westbrook equals 234, and... This is an interesting number in regards to King James. There's lots of King symbolism that's connected to the Rockets. Because when I first started following the Rockets pattern, it was there was a space theme that was going on. And Eugene Cernan had died just after I had talked about Eugene Cernan. And John Glenn also died. And then I talked about you know Don Rickles being important to Eugene Cernan. And then Don Rickles, the comedian, had died. And there was a space theme that I kept noticing. And... Even, there was a story about the Houston Rockets when they played the Oklahoma City Thunder that year, and Stephen Adams wore a NASA shirt at the post-game thing, and Stephen Adams' birthday was the anniversary of the, the moon landing and so on, right? So it's interesting that they're playing each other again this year. But, China Thomas died in a Toyota Camry. And the word Camry means crown, and she died in King County, Washington, and Isaiah Thomas he wore the number 22 when he originally played for the Sacramento Kings. And there was just a bunch of King symbolism that was going on. You know, he wrote, wore the number 22, King equals 22, and so on. And I talked about how it was synced up to, possibly synced up to King James, right? LeBron James, who won the NBA Finals on the real King James's birthday in 2016. And he played for the Cleveland Cavaliers, who's a follower of King Charles. A Cavalier is a follower of King Charles during the English Civil War. And just in regards to this, you know, if King James has to die before, you know, King Charles can become the king. And English Civil War equals 234. And it began on the 234th day of the year. And the leader of the Roundheads in that war, who eventually became like the, the ruler for a little while, was Oliver Cromwell whose name in Francis Bacon equals 234. And think that Francis Bacon was also alive 
around the same time as well. Oliver Cromwell, 234. English Civil War equals 234. It began on the 234th day of the year. So, I don't know. It's just something to think about in regards to LeBron James and so on, right? You know, the former Cleveland Cavalier. We also have Prince Charles. I spelled it wrong there, but Prince Charles also equals 183 in Francis Bacon. And if Queen Elizabeth dies, then he will become King Charles III, right? So, interesting that Prince Charles would equal the same as LeBron James. You know, it's just something I'm pointing out, I guess. Even King Charles III, I don't know what it equals in these ciphers. I think it's the other one. It equals 244. 244, this is the 244th year of the United States. Ironically, a little bit ago was the 244th day of the year, which was when Prince Charles' wife, Princess Diana, had died all synced up to the number 71. But anyway, let's move on to some other things here, because there's a lot of interesting stories going on. So we got the death of Cliff Robinson. They also called this uh, NBA strike. They called it a wildcat strike. If you look at what it's called, August 26th were postponed due to a wildcat strike. And, you know, think about this. The day the day after this wildcat strike, we got the death of Lute Olson, who's mostly known for coaching the Arizona Wildcats, right? A wildcat strike. Then Lute Olson dies at the age of 85. Basketball equals 85. Oddly enough, I had just documented about him and the Iowa Hawkeyes in the book that I've been writing. I mean, it was one of the last things that I wrote about. It was like a week before because I haven't wrote anything, but I just documented how he was synced up to Iowa. And I even looked him up earlier this year because they had the death of Hayden Fry right after C.J. Beathard's brother had died. And then the 49ers went on to the Super Bowl. C.J. Beathard was a 49er and... You know, the last time the 49ers won the Super Bowl was, I can't remember what Super Bowl it was, but it was in the, the 49ers' 49th season, and they won over the Chargers. And the Chargers' general manager was C.J. Beathard's grandpa. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they won with 49 points in their 49th season, and the lead rusher was Steve Young, who had 49 yards. The quarterback had 49 yards, and he was the lead rusher of that game. The 49ers, 49 points in their 49th season. I mean, the opposing quarterback, he threw 49 pass attempts in that game. But what I noticed with Lute Olsen back then was that his grandson just so happened to be the coach of the Houston Rockets D-League team, right? So, also in regards to Russell Westbrook, who's from Long Beach, and Lute Olsen began his career and basketball coach in Long Beach and whatnot in college basketball. So just something interesting, right? The Arizona Wildcat guy dies just after the Wildcat strike. And then what happens? The next day we get the death of the guy who plays the Black Panther. And what's a Black Panther? A Wildcat, right? Also, if you go back and review some of my videos about the Tiger theme that's connected to um, coronavirus and so on, right? Tiger King and whatever else. The tiger who got coronavirus, supposedly. And the tiger that was on Pink's kid's thing shirt on Ellen. And then the, can't remember, Siegfried or whatever. One of the people are in Las Vegas. The tiger people died. And all kinds of tiger stuff going on. But over this weekend, we also had Tiger Woods, like, shoot over par on all four rounds for the first time, like, in forever, right? Tiger Woods sucks really bad. Of course, you know, like a tiger's a wildcat as well. Look at Arizona Wildcats in Francis Bacon Gematria, too. Arizona Wildcats, 282. It's like Charles Manson equals 282. Notice how Charles Manson also equals 194. And would you believe that the Black Panther guy, let me find it here. No, I documented about it somewhere. Look at this. Chadwick Bozeman, or however you say his name, dies 194 days after the anniversary of the movie Black Panther coming out. 194 days. 
He also died of colon cancer. Colon cancer equals 194. What are the odds, right? Synced up to Charles Manson. His name equals 59. Colon cancer equals 59. Of course, slave equals 59. Negro, 59. You know, the list goes on with 59 and black people. And Abraham Lincoln even died, what was it, 59 days after his birthday. And the Civil War came to an end on the date of 5-9. And... He also died 93 days before his birthday, this Chadwick Boseman guy. You know, Martin Luther King Jr. equals 93, Malcolm X equals 93, he died on the anniversary of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. Colin Rand Kaepernick equals 93, the word Neil equals 93. George Floyd died 93 days before August 26, the day that the NBA strike happened, the day they originally said that Colin Kaepernick took a knee and so on. Black History Month equals 93, Minneapolis, Minnesota, where George Floyd died. Equals 93, Minneapolis is on the 93 degrees north. Rosa Parks' full name equals 93. Also equals 282, just like Charles Manson. It's also interesting that this Chadwick Boseman guy, he portrayed Jackie Robinson in the movie 42. Oddly enough, that movie came out on the same day that Kobe Bryant tore his Achilles. And... If you go back to the Houston Rockets narrative that I was following with Isaiah Thomas and so on, I knew there was King something important to the Kings and so on. And so I started following DeMarcus Cousins, and then DeMarcus Cousins, he ended up going to the New Orleans Pelicans, and then he tore his Achilles. But his, his first game when he was a New Orleans Pelican was against the Houston Rockets, and then... He tore his Achilles against the Houston Rockets on January 26th, exactly two years before Kobe Bryant died. But it was also 156 days after Kobe Bryant's birthday. And, you know, his name equals 81, just like Kobe being Bryant equals 81. They took DeMarcus Cousins out of the game with 8.1 seconds left. So I knew it was important to Kobe Bryant tearing his Achilles. And that was also important to the Houston Rockets because... Dwight Howard was on the team, and Mike D'Antoni was the coach at the time. And after Kobe Bryant tore his Achilles, the Dwight Howard left and went to the Houston Rockets. And then Mike D'Antoni later left after Kobe retired. or He left the next season, but he started coaching the Houston Rockets right after Kobe Bryant retired and so on. And it was also important to the Houston Rockets because... The Lakers ended up, I think they played the Houston Rockets the final game of the season that year, and it ended up giving them the seventh seed instead of the eighth seed over the Houston Rockets in the playoffs and so on. It's also why Luke Walton, he resigned from the Lakers on the same day that Kobe Bryant tore his Achilles, like the same date or whatever, or the same day, which is also the same day that the Civil War came to an end, right? So... And then Luke Walton, what's he do? He goes on and starts coaching the, the Kings, right? I should point out, too, that the Lakers played the Sacramento Kings on the final regular season game this year, just before the playoffs, and so on. So there, there is a lot of King symbolism that is connected to this narrative with the Rockets. But, you know, the Rockets have just, it's just super connected to the Charles Manson stuff. Dwight Howard being on the team just seems kind of weird to me because the whole reason I, th I thought there was something important to Dwight Howard before Dwight Howard was even thought of about coming back to the Lakers was because DeMarcus Cousins had played with, had signed with the Lakers and then DeMarcus C Cousins got injured and then lo and behold, the Lakers then signed C Dwight Howard on Kobe Bryant's birthday of all days, you know, but Dwight Howard turned 34 years old this year, which is a huge number with Kobe. He, he tore his Achilles age 34, scored 34 points in that game, and made his comeback against the Toronto Raptors on Dwight Howard's birthday the next year in the 34th week after tearing his Achilles. And that's why this year he died on the third month and fourth day of the NBA season. And he couldn't play with number 34 Shaq, and he won an Oscar on the date of 3-4. And much, much more. You know, this number 34... Super duper important with Kobe Bryant 
and Dwight Howard turned 34 years old, and then Kobe Bryant dies on 126, and Kobe tore his Achilles 126 days after Dwight Howard's birthday, and the same year that Kobe tore his Achilles, he tore it against, or he tore it one month and 26 days after Jerry Buss, the Lakers owner, died, and just before Kobe Bryant died, Jerry Buss's ex-wife died, Joanne Buss died, she died 41 days before Kobe's died. You know, of course, Kobe Bryant equals 41, died age 41, and so on. And that's why last year I thought LeBron James would get injured in connection to the number 34, right? Because he was going to be turning 34 years old. And, of course, LeBron James got injured on the 34th game of the Lakers season against the Golden State Warriors, who Kobe tore his Achilles against. And then on LeBron's 34th birthday, they played the Sacramento Kings, of all teams, you know? And then LeBron James made his comeback against the Los Angeles Clippers. And DeMarcus Cousins made his comeback from his Achilles injury against the, the Clippers. And then the Lakers played the Clippers again on the date of 3-4. And they got their 34th loss of the season. So, don't sleep on the Clippers. Honestly, I mean, it sounds weird because they don't look like the team right now, but... A lot of people forgot that uh, David Stern also died this year. I even forgot about it, really. Kobe Bryant's like the big, big narrative in the NBA, but David Stern, the former commissioner, also died. And David Stern was very important to the Los Angeles Clippers. He retired or quit the, the same season that the Clippers had that big racial controversy with their owner, Donald Sterling. Right, saying all the the racist remarks against Magic Johnson and so on, and it was that V Stiviano, his girlfriend, and so on, right? And that was all synced up to the Clippers, right? And the clip, excuse me, the Clippers are named after a you know the Clipper ship that was originally from Baltimore, the Baltimore Clippers. Think about the Civil War, Baltimore. A Clipper ship used to be, at one time, was a ship that they used in slave trading too. And think about David Stern, right? Stern is the back of a boat. Donald Sterling. And then Adam Silver took over. Sterling Silver is a big old joke, right? But Los Angeles Clippers equal 81 in Gematria. Just like Kobe Bean Bryant. Just like how the Raptors won last year right before Kobe Bryant dies. And, you know, Kobe scored 81 points against the Toronto Raptors. David Stern, too, I, I want to stick with this Black Panther thing, but David Stern is also important to the Houston Rockets because the first player that he ever announced in the NBA draft was Hakeem Olajuwon, right? Hakeem Olajuwon was one of the Twin Towers with Ralph Sampson, and I talked about this a while back when Spike Lee had all the problems with the New York Knicks and so on, and it reminded us of when Charles Oakley had the problems in 2017. With the New York Knicks, the year that I thought the Rockets were going to win the NBA Finals. James Dolan, the owner of the New York Knicks, his birthday is May 11th, which is the same day that the Houston Rockets got knocked out of the NBA playoffs that year, right? And so on. The same day that my best friend's brother had died in a car wreck. So, <laughs> there's definitely something interesting with this. And I talked about how it was important to the Jesuits and Patrick Ewing playing at Georgetown and... The 1985 championship was Georgetown beat the Houston Cougars that had Hakeem Olajuwon. And then in the 1994 NBA Finals, Hakeem Olajuwon went on to beat Patrick Ewing's Knicks, right? And he got his revenge from 1985. And, you know, shit you not. Now today, John Thompson Jr. dies, the coach of the Georgetown Hoyas in the 1985 championship, right? And... Look at his name in Jumatri. John Thompson Jr. Here. Maybe it's maybe it's not these Yeah, John Thompson Jr. Two hundred and sixty one. Just like Charles Manson. Look at Hakeem Olajuwon. Hakeem Abdul Olajuwon. Spelling it wrong, I think. Olaj. I don't know. Spelling it wrong here. Or maybe it's in these other ones. Hakeem Abdul Olajuwon. 
194, right? Just like Charles Manson. So, what are the odds? Also, you know, Allen Iverson was really important to the race symbolism as well. Allen Iverson got in this big brawl at a bowling alley when he's in high school. And then he ended up going to prison. And then Tom Brokaw just somehow got him out of prison. And then he got a chance at Georgetown and so on, right? This big scripted narrative, right? All about, you know, it was a black versus white thing. Just fitting for this year. And then the coach of Allen Iverson at Georgetown dies. You know, Allen Iverson, all about the number 56. Black Lives Matter equals 56. Coronavirus equals 56. Toilet paper, 56. And so on. So, Allen Iverson also played for Hampton, right? When he was in high school or whatever, he was from Hampton. And there's a huge narrative with that as well. That's why Virginia won the college championship last year. It was synced up to Ralph Sampson. And then Ralph Sampson was a twin tower with Akeem Olajuwon. So I guess I'm just bringing all that up because of the twin towers. And think about how the number 261 is important to the twin symbolism. And then we got John Thompson Jr. Who equals 261. He's important to that twin symbolism, right? So... Anyway, let's go back to the Black Panther guy. This Chadwick Boseman guy. Let me find it here. Jeez. This Chadwick Boseman guy, like I said, he was Jackie Robinson on the the movie 42. And he just happens to die on the day that the MLB has Jackie Robinson Day. I mean, what are the odds, you know? Jackie Robinson Day... Just ridiculous. And he dies on that day. Jackie Robinson, too. It's interesting because Jackie Robinson died exactly 33 years. I think it was before. I'm trying to think. 33 years before Rosa Parks died. They both died on the date of 1024. And that's an interesting day in general with some things I've been following. But that's the day that the guy who coined conspiracy theory as a term died. And. A number of other things with Darren Dalton that was important in 2017 and the mail package bomber who sent a bomb to Barack Obama on this date, 1024. So it's definitely something important. The, uh, I believe the World Series began that day too or something like that. Or maybe it was Darren Dalton's book came out on that day and that was the day that Zach made his first ever blog post. And, you know, Zach had blogged about Darren Dalton, his book, he blogged about his book on April 15th of 2017, the same day that China Thomas died. And then Darren Dalton died 113 days later. And Darren Dalton has Gematria, the same as Houston Astros, who went on to win the 113th World Series. And his book was called If They Only Knew. That equals 192 in Gematria. And Zach randomly blogged about him in his book 192 days before the World Series that year. So, you know, it was all synced up, but it's all synchronicity and so on. You know, I'm not saying he's a bad person or whatever, but just trying to point these things out. These things happen all the time, you know, and if you pay enough attention to what's going on in your own life, you don't even have to pay attention to the everything that's going on in the media, and you don't have to say that every time you see a 58, it means Freemasonry, you know. I'm not trying to be mean about that. It's just like, it doesn't always mean that, you know. There's multiple meanings going on with it. Anyway, the reason I think that the 33 years is interesting is, you know, think about KKK and how that equals 33. Also, you know, 3 times 11 is 33. Think about how the number 311 is the 64th prime number and how civil rights equals 64 and the Civil Rights Act was passed in... 1964 by Lyndon B. Johnson, whose name equals 64, Gematria, and oddly enough, Lyndon B. Johnson, he died age 64 too, but his birthday is August 27th, which is also the same day that W.E.B. Du Bois died, and he died in 1963, just the day before Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. And he was born on the day that has 311 days of the year. It's, you know, lots of stuff with that. So think about how the NBA 
was suspended this year on the date of 311 as well in regards to racism and now, you know, these protests and so on, right? 311 is also Anthony Davis's birthday. So, you know, think about the Lakers, Anthony Davis, 311, the season suspended on that day. It's all synced up to racism. Rosa Parks also equals 64. Jackie Robinson also equals 64. They die 33 years apart. Exactly. It's also interesting, too. This guy was uh, Thurgood Marshall in one of these movies. A movie called Marshall. And, of course, you know, he died by the numbers, too. It's like, or everything about him was by the numbers. He became the 96th Justice. And he was born on the same day that the Civil Rights Act was passed. It was passed in 1964, but he was born in 1908, which just so happens to be the same year that LBJ was born, Lyndon B. Johnson. And he became confirmed as an Associate Justice on the date of 8-30-1967, which was 59 days after his 59th birthday, and so on, right? 59 is a big number around black people. His if you spell his name the way it's actually spelled, it equals 102 and also 96. He's a 96 justice. 102, you know, slavery, 100, 102. The Civil War began on the 102nd day of the year. That super N-word equals 102. George Floyd's name equals 102. Will Smith's full name equals 102. That's why it's important that the number, you know, Jackie Robinson movie... 42, it came out on the 102nd day in 2013. Jackie Robinson also wrote to the King symbolism. Jackie Robinson, when he played in the Negro Leagues, he played for the Kansas City Monarchs. And it's interesting, too, his first game was with against the Boston Braves. And, you know, just think about Milwaukee and Jacob Blake and so on, right? The Braves also used to play in Milwaukee. Now they play in Atlanta. Atlanta's been really big in connection to all of the racism stuff as well. You know, think about Richard Brooks and the Windies. That was synced up to the twin symbolism. The Braves the last one in 1995, which is the last time the Houston Rockets have won the NBA Finals. So maybe it's something important to the, the Atlanta Braves as well. Also, Chadwick Boseman's birthday, 11-29. That's the day that Kobe Bryant announced his retirement from basketball. Remember he announced his retirement just after the Lakers lost by 34 points to the Golden State Warriors, the team that he tore his Achilles against? And remember what I said earlier about the number 34 at Kobe Bryant, right? What are the odds? He loses by 34 points to the Golden State Warriors. Then he announces his retirement the day before they play the the Philadelphia 76ers, and then he dies right after LeBron breaks his record, making him go from third to fourth on the all-time scoring list. And LeBron does that against the Philadelphia 76ers, and he runs down and stands on the, the snake on the court. It was on the 54th point of the game, and Kobe being Bryant equals 54. You know, 11 29s I saw on a Simple Truth TV's video, he talked about the William Byron, the NASCAR racer. I think he's the one who won the race. And this weekend or something, he drives the number 24. We talked about Kobe Bryant, numbers 8 and 24 and so on. But if you go back to when Kobe Bryant retired, Jeff Gordon, the NASCAR racer, also had just retired like the week before. And Jeff Gordon was famous for driving the number 24 in NASCAR. So... There was a whole lot of stuff with retirement going on around that time. Black History Month equals 213. Black Panther 213. The NBA Finals 213. Kobe Bean Bryant 213. Los Angeles also equals 213. And Los Angeles is in the 213 area code. Kobe died 213 days after Moses Malone. That was, you know, Moses Malone was the first player out of the NBA or out of the out of high school to play in the ABA, and right after Moses Malone died, Daryl Dawkins died, and Daryl Dawkins was the first player in high school to play in the NBA, you know, and then Kevin Garnett had went back to the Los Angeles, or to the Minnesota Timberwolves 
the previous season. And then right before Kobe announced his retirement, that season opened up the Lakers playing against the Minnesota Timberwolves. And they did a tribute to Flip Saunders, the coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves who died from cancer. Right? Flip Saunders. But Kevin Garnett was the a teenager out you know, that went and played for the Minnesota Timberwolves. He's a teen wolf. Kobe Bryant, of course, also came out of high school and was drafted to Charlotte and then got whatever traded to the Los Angeles Lakers. Michael Jordan, of course, owns Charlotte, the Charlotte whatever it is now, the Hornets. And then, you know, the Black Panther guy here, Chadwick Bozeman. The other guy who stars in the movie Black Panther is Michael B. Jordan. Think about Kobe, Michael, LeBron, Michael B. Jordan. They just moved that Mike Tyson fight to around Thanksgiving, which is also interesting because, you know, Michael B. Jordan's important to the movie Creed and Rocky and a bunch of stuff I've documented over the years. So Rocky's really important to that. Rocky's important to the tiger theme and, you know, think about a wildcat, the Black Panther, Chadwick Boseman's birthday. It's it's going to be on Thanksgiving weekend this year. Mike Tyson's also important to the thing, you know, or to uh, the Las Vegas attack, right? Mike Tyson, Las Vegas. He's important to the Tiger theme. Think about how O.J. Simpson was also important. O.J. Simpson was released released from jail. On the same day as the Vegas attack in 2017 that was synced up to the Jesuits. And I'm bringing that up because the O.J. Simpson, he's famous for that big chase in the white Bronco. And that chase just so happened to interrupt the 1994 NBA Finals when Hakeem Olajuwon got his revenge against Patrick Ewing. Right? It interrupted that game. So NBA Finals going on and they switched it over to O.J. Simpson's Bronco chase. There's just so many things with the Houston Rockets. It's crazy, but... Look at that. Thanksgiving, 183. Mike Tyson, 183. LeBron James, 183. Chad McBoseman, 183. The Lakers signed LeBron 183 days after his birthday on the day leaving 183 days in the year. Chad McBoseman's last film that he was in, or... The last one that's out was called Defy Bloods, and his name was Storm and Norman in that. Storm and Norman equals 183. And once again, if you go back to my friend Norm, that's how I knew the cliff symbolism was important. He was also important to this Houston Rockets narrative and King symbolism. So, you know, it's just crazy. Storm and Norman, that's what we used to call him. Storm and Norman, called him that forever, so... He's important to, you know, the cheers symbolism. He also had the Black Panther guy. He died on the the writers of Black Panther are Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. And he died on Jack Kirby's birthday. What are the odds, you know? He died at the age of 76. In the year 1994, right? The last time the Rockets won the finals. I didn't even notice that, but this date's important to Queen Elizabeth. That's the day she became the queen. He dies at the age of 86. His nickname was the King. He's known as the King of all all things to be nicknamed. You know, that's why it's important that his, he died on Queen Elizabeth's anniversary being the queen and so on look at stan lee his name equals 261 like charles manson like lebron james his name also equals 76 in gematria notice he was he died on charles manson's birthday fall days the jack kirby guy he died 76 days before charles manson's birthday stan lee equals 76 jack kirby died age 76 Negro equals 76. Slave equals 76. Houston Rockets also equal 76. There's also a huge narrative. I'm not even going to go into it with Zion Williamson. It's important to the Lakers and, you know, T. Shabob and so on and Anthony Davis. But, you know, he was born on 7'6". Oh, 
Oh man, I'm getting off topic here, but let's go back and look at the uh, the strike here, the boycott, do the Jacob Blake thing, right? What the first thing that stuck out to me when I when I saw all this these boycotts going on was that the only announcer who went and protested with the players was Kenny Smith, right? Kenny Smith goes and protests and so on. Think about Kenny Smith. Think about Charles Barkley even. Charles Barkley played for the Houston Rockets, but Kenny Smith, he won two championships with the Houston Rockets in 94 and 1995. And would you believe that this protest was 194 days before Kenny Smith's birthday? 194, like how Charles Manson equals 194. Milwaukee, Wisconsin equals 261, like Charles Manson. Milwaukee Bucks equal 208, just like Jacob Blake. Boston Celtics also equal 208. Back when the Rockets narrative really began with Isaiah Thomas, he played for the Boston Celtics. Boston Celtics equal 156. The word Achilles equals 156. China Thomas died 156 days after my birthday in a car that looked exactly like the car that I owned, I believe Toyota Camry equals 156 even, I think. Let me look at it. Toyota Camry equals 156. It was 156 days after my birthday. Kings equal 156. Achilles equals 156. Boston Celtics equal 156. Then DeMarcus Cousins, you know, he tore his Achilles. 156 days after Kobe Bryant's birthday, and the word Achilles equals 156, right? And then Kobe Bryant dies on that exact same day, 126, which is also 26 slash 1 in most parts of the world. I'm just bringing this up because there's there's a huge narrative with uh, the Boston Celtics in connection to this as well. And I don't even know, you know, Kimball Walker. His name equals 195 in Gematria, just like how in the Francis Bacon Ciphers, Rockets equal 195, and Houston, Te Houston, Texas equals 195, and George Floyd died 195 days after Charles Manson's birthday or death day, I can't remember which one it is, and Kimball Walker, his birthday just so happens to be 195 days before Charles Manson's birthday. His name equals 195. Boston Celtics also equal 195. Notice his name equals 39 as well. And he, he used to come from, he, last year he played for Charlotte or whatever. Or the He played for Charlotte before he played with the Boston Celtics and whatnot. Charlotte 39, that's what the team that Michael Jordan owns. And the day before I made this video with Simple Truth TV, the Houston Rockets got their 39th win of the season over the Boston Celtics with a score of 111-110. You know, the NBA Finals equal 111, so possibly the Rockets narrative, it could just be showing the Boston Celtics, too. You no. Know, I, I really think it's for the, the Houston Rockets. That's just my opinion. It just seems to be, all these things from 2017 seem to be coming true again, and I thought the Rockets were going to win that year connected to a space theme and all of this other stuff going on. So we'll see what happens in the Game 7. Game 7 will also be on 9-2, which is the same day that, that John Thompson Jr., his birthday is. But Kimball Walker's birthday is 5-8. That's also the same day as Mike D'Antoni's birthday. You know, Mike D'Antoni synced up to the Lakers, synced up to the Rockets. Houston Rockets equal 175. So does Los Angeles Lakers, so so does Golden State Warriors, you know, the team that Kobe tore his Achilles against. Los Angeles Lakers also equals 58, like Kimba Walker and Mike D'Antoni's birthdays, like Dwight Howard, like DeMar Cousin, DeMarcus Cousins also equals 58. My name equals 58, oddly enough, I was a freaking, you know, a Los Angeles Lakers fan my whole life, 58-95. What are the odds, you know? Another interesting thing with the Kenny Smith stuff. So, in 2017, remember Kenny Smith's mom died. Her, his name, her name was Annie Mae Smith. 
Katie Smith's mom dies, and her name equals 59, just like Houston Rockets, and so on. And that was another reason why I thought maybe that the Rockets were going to win that year, you know, uh, some type of sacrifice with Kenny Smith, the Houston Rockets, and so on. And I also, in the last video, I also went on and talked about Mariah Carey and Drew Carey and the importance of The Price is Right in 2017 and how it synced up to the Las Vegas attack and so on. And what's interesting is that Kenny Smith's, his ex-wife, was a model on The Price is Right. And then she quit right after the Las Vegas attack, right? And, of course, she quit. Or, Kenny Smith's mom died 174 days before she announced she was leaving The Price is Right. And The Price is Right equals 174 in Gematria. And it also equals 87. And his wife's birthday is 87. And they're now divorced and so on, but... It's just interesting, you know. 2017, I talked about a sync to The Price is Right. And then his wife was a model on The Price is Right. And then she resigned right after the the Vegas attack. And the Vegas, the guy who had the perfect showcase on The Price is Right reached out to me the day before the Vegas attack. It was synced up to the Jesuits. And I got a phone call on the Jesuit anniversary from a Las Vegas phone number. You know. There's something super fishy about it all. That's why I say there's definitely some type of cabal or some type of something going on, you know. But I really just want to understand the world more than anything, you know. And Anyway, her name, look at her name. One, 2020 in Jewish. Also 102, you know, perfect for a black person. She's currently 42 years old. Perfect for a black person. I went on and just pointed out Ernie Johnson, too, because the article about Kenny Smith boycotting, they made sure to let us know that Ernie Johnson told him that he that was okay and whatnot. And when Kenny Smith's mother died, Ernie Johnson was also the guy who read a poem or whatever that, a tribute that Kenny Smith wrote for his mom and so on. So I, I just wondered about Ernie Johnson. I looked up Ernie Johnson. He just happens to be from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He's a... Just turned 64 years old, like the civil rights number, and so on. Born on 8-7, the same day as Kenny Smith's ex-wife. And, uh... Trying to think what else there was here. He's from Milwaukee, that's where the... You know, right in the same vicinity of the Jacob Blake stuff. His name equals the same as Kenneth Smith. And also the same as Kenny Smith's nickname, The Jet. Also, Colin Kaepernick equals 146. We also have this, you know, the, the Kyle Rittenhouse, right? The the kid who killed people in the streets and whatever. And the, the riots and whatever. It also says name equals the same as... Well, I spelled it wrong there, but Kenosha, Wisconsin equals 198. Kyle Rittenhouse equals 198. Ernie Johnson equals 198. Kenneth Smith, 198. Colin Kaepernick, 198. Russell Westbrook, 198. Should also point out that uh, Dwight David Howard II equals 198. So, as I was looking at Ernie Johnson... This is more synchronicity here. I was looking at Ernie Johnson, and I I read that his father. It says he's a he's a devoted Atlanta Braves fan, and there was something about his father. I thought his father played for the Atlanta Braves, and he's an Atlanta Braves fan, and so on. And I noticed that it said he lives in Brazelton, Georgia, and this just stuck out to me because. I know I know an Atlanta Braves fan. I haven't seen her in years, but her name is Lisa Brazel. And he lives in Brazelton, Georgia. And in 2017, I was talking about the USS Fitzgerald and how it was synced up to this old lady who lived two houses down from me named Betty Fitzgerald. But before she lived there, my friend Clark Brazel had lived there and his sister Lisa. And I looked up Clark and his he doesn't have a Facebook, but his wife does. 
and they share one, and her birthday was the Jesuit anniversary, and the U.S. sets Fitzgerald was all synced up to the Jesuits, and uh, Father Fitzgerald, who we've joked that molested me when I was a kid and so on, and his name equaled Clark Brazel equaled 312, just like how Pope Francis's name equals 312, Jorge Mario Bergoglio, and the word Pope equals 312, this big number I was talking about with the Jesuits in 2017. So anyway, I was like, huh, you know, his sister is an Atlanta Braves fan, and I typed out her name in Gematria. Of course, her name equals 194, just like Charles Manson, right? 194. And his name equals 195, like Minnesota Twins, like Houston, Texas, like Rockets, like Hindsight equals 195. So, once again, I pointed out the Braves won in 95, just the last time the Houston Rockets also won. Lisa Brazel makes me think of Lisa Simpson because Clark kind of looks like Milhouse and, you know. Thinking about the election and how the election falls on Colin Kaepernick's birthday. You know, then you got Kamala Harris. and That's a whole other narrative, you know, because she announced that they announced that she's going to be the vice president running mate on August 11th. And she's from San Francisco and that's Hulk Hogan's birthday. The day in Port of Tisha Bob and Philadelphia and so on. All kinds of crap I talked about last year. Then you also have that wrestler named Kamala Die, and the name Kamala actually means like garden or pink lotus flower. And remember the movie I Pet Goat that has the pink lotus flower, and Obama starts sweating. Lisa Simpson's the first, the the woman president after Donald Trump, and so on. So I guess that's why I'm pointing it all out. My friend Clark also. Uh, his wife got her master's degree at the University of Milwaukee, or Wisconsin, Milwaukee. And Lisa's birthday, his sister Lisa just so happens to be born on Kobe Bryant's birthday. So I know it's important. Also, in regards to the twin symbolism on Facebook, I saw Edgardo Rod- Rod- Rodriguez. He pointed out that uh, the name Jacob. If you look up Jacob, like Jacob Blake, Jacob was also a twin, right? He had a twin brother, so. The word Blake, it means, it can mean pale white, or it can also mean black, right? White and black and so on. Think about Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson and the Black Panther and that, I think it's in the black and white video, isn't it? With the Black Panther. I don't know if this is true yet, but I found this website that said Jacob Blake's birthday was April 30th, which just so happens to be 25 days before 525, which is the same day that Canon Hennant was born, and he turned 5 years old 25 days before 525, and Helter Skelter Theory equals 525, and 525 is 5 months and 25 days before the anniversary of Charles Manson dying, and, you know. The support to Nick Cannon's Twins, and so on. And Mariah Carey releasing her new album, Five Months and 25 Days, what, before or after her birthday? And Kenosha, Wisconsin also equals 234, like Orlando, Florida, like Russell Westbrook. So I guess I really just wanted to point out that they boycott this stuff and that Kenny Kenny Smith is all synced up to the year 2017, synced up to the Rockets. It's just really weird. And then it's 194 days, just like that Charles Manson thing. I mean, it's absolutely super duper connected to what I'm talking about. Also, uh, Donald Trump's brother, Robert, who just died, you know, he... His birthday was August 26th, the same day of these protests. He would have been 72 years old. The cop who shot Jacob Blake was 72. On Wikipedia, they've been writing his name as Jacob S. Blake. That equals 72. Kenosha, Wisconsin, 72. 
Kyle Rittenhouse, 72. These strikes happened on what would have been Donald Trump's 72nd birthday. Think about Colin Kaepernick's birthday falling on the day of the election. This movie also got a story about Marcus Houston, the guy from Sister, Sister, and how he married a 19-year-old. I mean, what's Sister, Sister about? It's about twins. Marcus Houston. Twins. <laughs> I remember him from the, the group Immature. They had that song. I will never lie again. Whatever, but... uh. I don't even know anymore. His nickname is Batman. Batman's 261. If you go back to last year, last when Dwight Howard signed with Kobe Bryant on Kobe Bryant's birthday and so on, and then the Houston Rockets had all the drama with uh, China and whatever. That's synced up to China Thomas, and it was synced up to Batman, the Joker movie coming out. So, it's just interesting. Batman 261. Man, there's so much more. I'm getting so tired. I may, maybe I'm just going to stop and finish this tomorrow, but I'm just kind of rambling here. But when I looked up this Marcus Houston guy, right, when you go to his IMDb, it says that he was also in Freddy vs. Jason. But if you look up Freddy vs. Jason, he's absolutely not in Freddy vs. Jason that I can find. It doesn't list him anywhere. But I've seen a bunch of places that said he's in Freddy vs. Jason. And it's just interesting because. You know, if you go back to July when Kanye West started running for president and so on, I knew I talked about how Kanye West and Taylor Swift were important to Freddie Gray, and it was also important to Freddy Krueger, right? Because Freddie Gray, he died on the same day that Freddy's Drop Dead Fred came out, which was the mirror day of. Freddy's Dead coming out, and then we had Freddie Mercury die later that year in 1991. And uh, the VMAs just so happened to fall on the same on the anniversary of the Freddy's Dead movie, Freddy Krueger. And then on the day of the VMAs in 2015, Wes Craven, the creator of Freddy Krueger, died, right? And then in 2018, when Kanye visited the White House, I talked about how it was important to Fleetwood Mac. And... Just after Kanye announces he's going to run for president, Taylor Swift releases a new album, and the next day, John Saxon, I think it is, of who was the cop in the very first ever Freddy Krueger movie died, and also one of the members of Fleetwood Mac died. Like, what are the odds of that, you know? Fleetwood Mac dies. A guy from Fleetwood Mac dies. A guy from the Freddy Krueger movie dies the day after Taylor Swift drops a new album. Right after Kanye West announced he's going to run for president. He said he's going to run for president at the 2020 VMAs the same day that Wes Craven died. So I thought it was interesting that IMDb would show that this guy was in Freddy vs. Jason. And I can't find it anywhere, you know, so. But you also just had uh, Alice Johnson being commuted by Donald Trump. And she was commuted on Robert England's birthday. And Robert England is important because he's Freddy Krueger. He's the guy who portrays Freddy Krueger. But the big thing I was talking about with Kanye was how he sang at Glastonbury in 2015. And he got booed off the stage and so on, right? But he sang the Queen song that's by, you know, Queen, Freddy Mercury. Think about, you know, Freddy Gray, Drop Dead Fred, Freddy Mercury, Freddy's Dead. And so on. He sang it on Queen Elizabeth, you know, the Queen song. He sung it in Glastonbury. Glastonbury's where King Arthur supposedly had, you know, Excalibur. And he got it from the Lady of the Lake who was named Rhiannon, supposedly. And then, uh, you know, the Fleetwood Mac has a song called Rhiannon. And all synced up. That's why I knew Fleetwood Mac was important. To like a, a King Arthur thing or a King symbolism. So, once again, it, it really all goes back to the King symbolism. So, 
I really could be wrong about the Houston Rockets. It really could just be synced up to LeBron James, who is 35 years old, you know, and King James equals 35. 